Hi, I'm Sherry Hobb. I'm going to be showing you how to make a bracelet today using this texture sheet. This is the Garden Thorns collection based on some of my favorite botanical illustrations by Dynasty Stamps. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make this bracelet. To make the bee for this bracelet, I'm going to be using the image from the stamp sheet here. And to start, I'm going to dampen the sheet with a little bit of slip to make sure it doesn't stick to my clay. And I'm using copper clay for this project. And sometimes your copper clay can be a little dry like this. So I add, just with my fingers, a few drops of water, fold it in, and it doesn't matter if you get messy, that's part of the fun. So I'm just molding it and making the clay nice and soft and you want it nice and smooth, but not too sticky. So once I've got it nice and smooth, I'm going to roll it into a ball and then flatten it out on my surface with a roller. Or you could do it by hand if you like a more organic look. So I've got the ball of clay, I'm putting it on my work surface. I have these two spacers here to keep it an even thickness, um, but you could, of course, freehand if you want just a real natural look and you don't, you're not too fussy about thickness. So I'm rolling the clay on a nonstick surface, and then I'm ready to press it into my design. So I press it over the top of the stamp sheet, and first I start by kind of anchoring it with my fingers to make sure that it's secure and it doesn't slide around. And then I can take the roller and just gently press on the mold. Now if you feel the design come through where you can really feel it too sharp with your fingers, you know you've pressed too far into the texture. But the neat thing about metal clay is you can always roll it up and start over again. You're always good to just roll it up in a ball, start over, make sure you've got enough water in there and try it again. Sometimes it takes a little practice. So I've got that and I've got my B shape here. And I don't think I've rolled anything too thin and I just kind of pat it out and make sure I don't have any little mistakes there. And if you do, if you see any cracks at this stage, after this is dry, I can always fill those in with a little um, moist clay that I've um, turned into a slip, which is just adding water to the clay and just fill in those little cracks. So I've got it here and I'm going to pierce a few holes for stringing later. And I use just a sharp tool, straight up and down, and I'm just going to make a little hole, two little holes on each side. Make sure that you're not too close to the edge because later I'm going to be sanding and refining this piece and I don't want to be so close that I can't enlarge these holes without running into the edge. So I like to use household items when I create my jewelry just because that's what I have on hand. So what I like to use is a, a mug like this for my form and I've just, I've just taped a piece of Teflon onto the mug and that just helps it not to stick and just drape your clay piece gently over the mug like this. And this gives a nice shape to the piece. It helps it to dry in the shape that's gonna be a nice contour on your wrist when you wear it as a finished bracelet. So we'll let that dry right there. After my piece is completely dry, I'm ready to refine the edges to get ready for firing. So I've got one that's dry here and I make sure that I can handle it. And these holes may need a little bit of work to enlarge them. So I use the tip of my knife, my craft knife. And a little secret that I like to use is to support the charm on all sides with my fingers. And then I just spin the tip of the tool around to enlarge the hole. The knife is extremely sharp, so take care while you're widening these holes not to cut your fingers. Work very gently and deliberately to make sure that you're careful. And the nice thing is these can also be refined after firing, but it helps to do it at this stage where it's a little bit easier than working on hard metal. So after I've enlarged the holes, I check my piece. I see a little crack here where I can fill that in with a little damp clay. And then the edges may need a little bit of sanding. I use an ordinary nail file and I just go around and sand the edges and shape it and smooth out any imperfections, especially around the edge here. And one thing I like to do too is bevel it. I like to hold it at a 45 degree angle and take, take it down a little bit this way and a little bit on the front because then I have sort of a, a rounded edge here rather than just a straight up and down cookie cutter edge to my piece. Then as a last step, after I've refined my edges and, and uh, shaped these holes with the knife, I take a little bit of water, just use my finger or brush and just smooth around the edges 
And this just takes the place of a lot of fine sanding. You really can cut your time down just by smoothing the edges with water. And for this particular design, I'm not looking for perfection. I want it to have an old world vintage look. So if there's a few little, little cracks in it that aren't structural, I'm okay with that because then it looks like an antiquity that I found at an antique shop. After I refined my piece, I fired it according to the directions for copper clay. And I have one here that's been finished in the firing process. And I've tumbled it to make it nice and shiny. And then I've also added a patina using liver of sulfur. And so the next part is going to be adding little eyelets on the side just to make it look a little bit more finished and just to add interest to the piece. And to do this, I have this riveting tool that also has an eyelet setter. It's got a hole punch side and the side sets the eyelet. This is a 3 32nd size. And I use the one side here to punch the hole. Now these, these holes were they were fairly large before I fired it, but this just helps make it the exact size that's going to fit my eyelet that I'm going to place there. So twist, it'll go right through that metal clay. These are a heat hardened steel tool that basically go through very thick gauges of metal. And then I'm going to set an eyelet there. So I have a brass eyelet that will fit that hole exactly and place it in. And you notice I've got my tool in a vise where I've angled it so that I don't drop that eyelet, but sometimes you can put a little card or something in there to help you. So I've got it with the head of the eyelet down at the base, and I'm gonna screw down until the little pin that's on that top goes right down in the center of that semi-tubular opening. And you just tighten down till it feels tight that, that it gives, but you're not cranking so hard that you're going to mar your metal. And then if you don't get it enough, you can always put it back in and try again until you get it just right. And I need to do that, actually. I'm going to tighten it just a little more, give it a good squeeze, and then back out. And I've got this beautifully set eyelet that's predictable every time. And it could also be hammered if you'd like a flat look on that. And then the next step on this, for this finished bracelet, I've attached cord and then just um, have tied simple square knots, a macrame knot around the edge. Or you could put chain here with a jump ring. You could put a piece of ribbon. And this is really the fun part because you can design the piece any way you like. So I've got some waxed linen cord here and I'm just going to finish the piece by setting the eyelets and just threading this wax cord here and knotting it until it fits my wrist. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about metal clay. You can find the Garden Thorns stamp sheet and many more at riogrande.com. Thanks for watching.